Hello chaps, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again. I do hope you're well. Now then, nothing in the way of fancy guitar licks and tricks today. In this video we're going to be looking at something a little bit more esoteric. The origins of music, almost. If you've ever wondered why we have 12 frets in an octave, why some notes have two names, you know, like C sharp, which is the same as D flat, F sharp, which is the same as G flat, and so on, then that's what we're going to be investigating today. And probably the best place to start is with this fella, who you may remember from your school maths lessons, Pythagoras. When he wasn't messing around with right angled triangles, he was also investigating what made music tick. Here's what he discovered. Okay, what Pythagoras noticed was that if you have a string, he used a vibrating metal bar, uh, much like a glockenspiel or something, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, if you take that vibrating note, then half the length of the string or bar that you've got vibrating to produ produce your note, you get a higher version of the same note. What you've done is you've doubled the frequency of the vibration. So that it was that 2 to 1 ratio that he discovered was important. You could generate another note or another version of the same note simply by doubling the frequency of that note. The other thing that he noticed, the other ratio that he noticed, was 3 to 1. Okay, If I take this original vibration, this frequency, this note, there it is, that's 110 cycles per second. If you multiply that by 3, so you've now got a 3 to 1 ratio rather than a 2 to 1 ratio like we had here, you get 330 cycles per second and we can tease this out on the guitar here using the seventh fret harmonic so using a ratio of two to one you can get higher or lower versions of the same note simply by doubling or halving the frequency and using a three to one ratio you can generate an actual new note and it didn't take him long to figure out, well, what happens if you do that 3 to 1 ratio from that new note that you've generated, and from the note that that gives you, and from the note that that gives you, and so on. You'll end up with a string of notes, a ladder, an ascending ladder of notes. And the Greek word for ladder is scala, which is where we get the term scale from, incidentally. The problem is, though, that a lot of those notes are going to be quite high compared to where we started from. Basically, what we're trying to do here is create a scale, a ladder of notes that goes from our original 110 cycles per second note up to its higher cousin, which is 220 cycles per second. Now, if you remember, this next note that we generated using the 3 to 1 ratio, multiplying our original note by 3, that takes us to 330 cycles per second, which is above the upper limit of this 220 um, ending point. So what do you do with that 330? Well, if you divide it by 2, you get to 165, which is within the, the range that we want to create. And by doing that divide by two method to all of the notes that fall outside these two notes, we end up almost, but not quite, with the familiar twelve step scale that all modern music is based upon. I say we end up almost with that uh, resulting scale because we now run into a problem known as the Pythagorean comma. Here's a little bit of an explanation about that. Okay, here's our original 110 cycles per second note. And if, as we discussed earlier, we multiply that by 3, we get 330 cycles per second, which we then divide by 2 to bring us back within the range that we want, at 165. 
If we then multiply that by 3, we come to 495, and we can do a couple of divisions by 2 to bring us down to 123, which is within the range that we want, and so on, and so on, and so on. And we end up, after 12 steps, at 446, which we divide by 2, and that takes us to 223 cycles per second. And therein lies the problem, because... 223 is not the 220 that we need in order to create the higher version of our original note. It's a little bit out, and this is what we call the Pythagorean comma. Now, it's important to realise that this 3 to 1 ratio that we've based all of this on isn't just plucked out of the air. As you saw earlier, that note is naturally present in the vibration of the string. We know this because we can tease it out as a harmonic on the guitar. Now, if we continue beyond 12 steps with this multiplying by three method, and then, of course, using the divide by two uh, technique to bring it back within the range that we want, we will eventually end up at 220 cycles per second. But the problem is, along the way, we will generate a lot of notes that are indistinguishable from each other. A legacy of that in our modern system of music is the fact that some notes have two names. This is why C sharp is also D flat. Once upon a time there were different notes. It seems that one twelfth of the distance between 110 cycles per second or any note and the note which is double that frequency is about the limit of what we as human beings can discern in terms of different notes. But the natural harmonics which occur within any note on any instrument which we use in order to generate a string of other notes from which we make music these harmonics don't care what we can and what we can't hear. They are there because of the physics of the string vibrating. So it seems that if we need to use a 12-step scale, because that's what our ears are comfortable with, and if that 12-step scale gives us a top note which is slightly out with what we would hope it to be, 223 cycles per second as opposed to 220, we have a problem. Now, the way around this problem for many, many years, many centuries, was to simply ignore the calculation for the final note and just put in the one that we thought should be there. In this case, it would be 220 cycles per second. And this works reasonably well, as long as you stay within one key. The problem comes when you move to a different key. We've already seen what frequencies we get and therefore what notes we get if we start from 110 cycles per second an A note but we would get an entirely different set of frequencies and notes if we were to start from a different note to begin with let's say C sharp if we begin all of our calculations from that starting point, an F sharp note comes out at 188.15 cycles per second. However, beginning on our original note, 110 cycles per second, which is an A, by the way, then F sharp from that starting point works out at 185.62 cycles per second. So once again we have this discrepancy, this Pythagorean comma. And this means that if the same note works out at a different frequency depending upon which starting note you use, which key you're in essentially, then you can't play music that moves from one key to another. And by the 18th century this was becoming a massive problem for composers, for musicians, and for instrument makers. And this wasn't really sorted out until the arrival on the scene of the nearest thing that music has to an Albert Einstein figure. What Bach did was to take that slight but noticeable discrepancy, the Pythagorean comma, which we get, remember, when we follow Pythagoras's natural harmonic-based calculations, Bach took that discrepancy and chopped it up, essentially, into 12 much smaller and not noticeable discrepancies, which were then distributed evenly across the entire 12-step chromatic scale that we use to this day. 
He actually published a series of works, a, a, co a collection of works, called The Well-Tempered Clavier, which was essentially just a wander through all 12 major and minor keys, proving that by using his equally tempered system of tuning, that you could play in all keys without having to retune your instrument. It was a breakthrough easily on a par with something like the invention of the internal combustion engine or even the industrial revolution, something of that magnitude. It revolutionized music and it's not an exaggeration to say that none of the music which has existed since the time of Johann Sebastian Bach could have existed without that breakthrough that he made of equally tempered tuning. You can, however, still find a remnant of the old Pythagorean tuning system on any guitar, providing you have an accurate enough tuner. What you should do is, first of all, make sure that your guitar is in tune, then play the open E string and measure it on a really accurate strobe tuner or something like that. Then play the harmonic found at the 7th fret on the 5th string. Now if you've got a really good ear, or a really good tuner, you will discover that those two notes are not exactly the same. This one, the harmonic, is, surprise surprise, based on Pythagoras' system of natural harmonic based calculations, whereas the open E string is based on our modern, equally tempered style of music. Now even if you can't hear the the difference between those two notes. You may be thinking, well, what difference does it make? Well, the fact that you can take a bar chord or a scale pattern or anything and move it up one fret at a time without having to retune your instrument as you go is thanks to equal temperament, which is thanks to Johann Sebastian Bach. You may also have noticed that if you've ever heard indigenous or ethnic styles of music from around the world. It may sound somehow out of tune to our Western ears. And this is because not every culture around the world adopted the equally tempered system of tuning that we use. One of the main reasons why we use equal temperament, if you remember, is so that we can create music that moves from one key to another key to another key without having to retune our instruments. Well, if you're playing music that doesn't need to change key, why do you need to adopt a new style of tuning? And it's one of the things that strikes you as sounding exotic in some cases, or as I said earlier, maybe a little bit off to our Western ears when you hear music from other cultures. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a brief summary of how music works, essentially. How our 12-step chromatic scale that we use and take for granted these days was arrived at. Why some notes have more than one name. And just generally what makes the whole thing tick. I hope you found it informative and I hope you found it as interesting as I did when I first researched all of this sort of stuff. Now if you're looking for some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition, back down on planet Earth if you like, um, then get in touch with me and we can sort something out. I do lessons via Skype and if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, I also do face-to-face -face lessons. So get in touch with me and your first lesson is free, by the way. Whilst I'm here, I'll also make uh, a mention for my current album that's out in stores at the moment you can get it on iTunes Amazon Apple Apple everywhere basically you can find this album it's called the whiskey made me do it and it's full of catchy melodic shreddy blues rock guitar so what's not to like there there'll be a link in the description box below telling you how to get hold of it and with that I'll bid you all good day and say bye for now see you next time folks